go, Hall. <laughs> I should have said that to you. <sighs> All right, Tennessee representatives are joining us. And we'll take a brief statement from coach to open things and then direct st questions to student athletes. And once they've been dismissed, we'll return to Coach Warlick. Coach? Um, I, Gonzaga was just absolutely, they were awesome today. And, and great credit to their coach, the coaching staff, and the kids. They fought hard. And uh, it was a battle. And, and we had to give everything we, we had. And the crowd was was phenomenal. Uh, I know they weren't yelling for us, but to come out and support um, Gonzaga, it, it was huge. And that's, that's how basketball, women's basketball should be. Um, so I understand how special this place is and the fans and the people here. And uh, it, it's, it's been a, it was just a, a, a uh, they've had a great run and you know, my hat's off to them. All right, we have Sierra Burdick, Ariel Massingale, and Jamie Nard. And let's direct questions to student athletes. Max Lovin, the Tennessean, for, for all three of you, have any of you ever been a part of a comeback like this before in, in, at any level? Sierra, let's start with you. Well, I think in the SEC tournament last year, um, Amaz and I had our fair share of comebacks considering we were down 15 every game of that tournament and ended up winning the championship. But Nothing tops this. I mean, we were down, what, 17 at one point, and we came back and went in overtime. I mean, I think that just goes to show that no matter how many punches you throw at us, we're going to continue to get up, and we're going to keep fighting. And, you know, we never thought we were out of this game. And that's just Tennessee basketball. That's our mindset. Ariel? I'm with Sierra on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie? I have not. Um, this is my first year, and just being a part of this game was just so exciting. I've never experienced it, and I was just proud of how everyone fought. Sierra, Patrick McCoon, the Daily Beacon. Just describe how tough this game was down low. They had three bigs, and you guys had to draw the fouls to pretty much win this game in overtime. Just how tough was it to get to the free throw line and actually cap this thing off tonight? Um, well, I give a lot of credit to Gonzaga because their inside game is unbelievable. I mean, they're tough and they're physical and um, a lot physical, more physical than what I anticipated. You know, we knew they were more of a finesse team, but they came out and battled and they made everything hard for Bashar and me and myself and Jamie when she was down low. So um, I give them the credit. We had to draw the fouls late to win this basketball game and, you know, our free throws are what saved us. Michelle Smith, ESPNW. Ariel, when you're down 17 with 6:30 to go, is it hard to is it hard to believe that you guys can get up off the mat? I don't think so. Um, as Sierra said, this team has been in this position before. Um, we just we have this drill in practice called the persistence drill, where you have to play 30 seconds of perfect defense, and you know if you get a backdoor cut or give an offense rebound, the clock starts over. And I know from Sierra and myself, there's been times where we've been in that drill for 45 minutes um, in one practice, and so that's something that we just kept telling ourselves: persistence drill, persistence drill. And you know we do a lot of running, our 55s, um, suicides that we run, just with the conditioning purposes and having to go into overtime. And you know just extremely proud of my teammates for not giving up. We fought. Um, coaching staff believed in us. And, you know, we came out with the W. Sonny Kedwallader, Ketchika Sports and Sporting Nation. Ariel, let me direct this question to you. Not looking at the second half, but the first half, you guys were still down, but you, right before the half, you hit that big three-pointer. How crucial was that for your mindset going into halftime? I think it was very crucial, not only for myself, but for my teammates as well. You know, as a shooter, it's always good to see the ball go through the basket. Um, and, you know, we, had, we were down early in the first half, so to be able to fight back then um, and get the tie the game up, um, we went into halftime thinking the score is 0-0, and we knew those first four minutes would be crucial for us. And, unfortunately, we dug ourselves into an even bigger hole in the second half. Um, but, you know, we kept fighting. We never gave up. Crystal Blunt, Westwood One Radio. This is for any of the student athletes. I have to be honest, I looked over and the body language, uh, you're down 17, there's not a lot of time left, but there was time left. Who's the player or, or who kind of pulled it together? At what point did you really feel, we've got this, we can turn it around? Is there somebody in particular that really steps in and lifts you guys up? Sierra? Um, <clears throat> I think 
Ariel and myself at being the senior leaders out there. Um, we just try to keep everybody calm, cool, and collective and positive. And, you know, everybody's, you got Jordan uh, getting hype. Um, Jamie's bringing great energy. Alex is just hounding the basketball. And that itself, you know, our actions are what build up the energy. Um, and then vocally, uh, our coaches did a phenomenal job of just keeping us in sync, you know, telling us what we needed to do. Um, at sometimes, all four of them were were t talking to us, but that's just how passionate they are. Um, so I, I think it was a, a group effort. It was a collective, uh, you know, just keeping us in it. Sierra's kind of a follow-up to that. There were points where I looked at you and it almost looked like you were like, this is not going to happen. I'm, we're not going out like this. Was that, what, is that kind of what you were thinking? That was definitely my mindset. Um, being a senior, you know, we went out early last year in the same round and I, um, I was, uh, I did not want that to happen again. I don't want to leave Spokane this early. You know, I, I love Knoxville, but I'm not ready to go back yet. And we got more business to take care of. You know, our goal is to get to Tampa. It's been that since day one. So whatever it took, we were willing to do. For Jamie, just how tough was this game playing in it as a freshman and just, you had a double digit performance and one of the most intense environments in your career. It was really exciting, to be honest. It was just a great environment to be around. I was proud of everyone, and it was a game that I remember forever because of how hard everybody played and how we all came together and we were down by such a large amount. And we never hung our heads. Our coaches were yelling at, or keeping a good vibe around the game and just making sure that we were um, just keeping our head leveled. So it was exciting. We have time for one more question for student athletes, if there is one. All right, we'll dismiss 10th C student athletes. He may not go back. <laughs> Questions for Coach Warlick. <laughs> I forgot he came. <laughs> Holly, down by 17 with 6.34 to go. You didn't make a field goal in overtime. It was 10 yep. free throws. Um, the most interesting way to win a game you've had as a head coach so far? Oh, absolutely. I, we weren't, we weren't uh, they had such strong defense on us inside. We were struggling to score, and, and so we chose to, to uh, we, we thought we could take a uh, advantage of, uh, of our height of their guards and um, we started posting our guards up and I tell you it, it was it was huge for us to only miss one free throw obviously and, and it was a pressure pressure situation in overtime and, and we didn't miss a free throw so um, you know we had we had we had kids up there that are that, that were pretty solid strong uh, headstrong um, and I think we got the right people on the free throw line to take the shots. Um, Sonny Cadwell at our Sporting Nation and Kajika Sports. Coach, one of the things I noticed was um, Alexa Middleton's defense. Yeah. Where she, it was when you brought her in, her intensity really kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. We, our goal today was to, to put pressure on the ball. We felt like we could affect them with ball pressure. And, and uh, before Lex came in, we didn't we, – Andrea Carter did it a little bit but got in foul trouble. And then Lex came in and, and did exactly what we wanted her to do. And uh, we had two, two freshmen step up. They've not played in this – they haven't been down by that much. They haven't played really in an in, in environment in the in um, NCAA tournament. And I thought they came in and made – Big plays for us, did some big things. I thought Jamie got big rebounds. Lex was huge on the defensive end. So I think they grew up and understand that we need them. And not too often, freshmen have to step up. Freshmen have to step up because something's going to happen. And freshmen almost don't really know that they're supposed to be nervous or scared. They don't know what they're missing out on. So I thought our freshmen really stepped up and, and helped us out today. Coach, Tom Klaus, Spokes and Review. Um, you said uh, on the pregame that uh, you don't like to take a lot of threes. Yes. Uh, and you took 19 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain, uh, you know, 
Well, we couldn't Can't get the ball. We, we had nothing inside. We, we, we had no answer for their, their inside. We were getting shot blocked, shots blocked. Um, you know, they were sagging in, and, and, and you know, I, I thought it uh, – I don't think we took too many quick threes. I thought we got good looks. Um, I thought Ariel's three at the half was huge for us. So, uh, yeah, that's not normally our, our game plan and, and, and uh, our style, but when you have the, the, the presence of, of Gonzaga and their big kids inside that are playing great defense, we had to find our points other ways. At what point did you decide to put on the, the press, and, and did you consider going to it earlier in the game? Um, well, I decided we were getting our butts kicked, so I thought we got to do something different. Um, we, 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 we just had to change the momentum, and we, we, we pressed the first – we zone pressed the first half, and I thought we did some good things, and then they adjusted. Um, so we decided to, to run a full court run and jump, and it was huge for us. If not anything, it took, took time off the clock, made them rush, made them hurry. Uh, and we got turnovers, and, and it got us back in the game. And we really haven't used that press a lot this year, but obviously it came in real handy tonight. Holly, oh, there's not a lot of time to think in between tournament wins, but once you get the chance to kind of just watch this game over again at some point in the future, do you think it's one of the most gratifying feelings you'll have as a head coach? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I've only been doing this three years, so. Uh, I don't think in it well uh, in the in the tournament we I, we haven't come back by this this much and and last year we got we got beat in in this round so uh, yeah to date this was the most exciting NCAA game for me so I hope it's not going to end but it's it was exciting Holly can you talk about what Sierra Burdick did for your team today and how many different ways well <clears throat> you know Sierra is just she's our workhorse and. Um, you know, we've asked her to do a lot of things, lead the team. I thought she was great on the boards. Uh, she hit big shots for us. She kept her head in the game. I thought the first half she, she got a little um, displaced, and then we took her out. But, uh, you know, she keeps the team pretty focused. And in, in, the, in the huddles, um, I thought she did a great job of getting our kids to, to focus in and listen to what we were trying to do. So. She's been an unbelievable leader for us. Her, she and Massengill have been been absolutely incredible, and they've had a they've had a shoulder a lot of the burden since Izzy's gone out. So, not only scoring and rebounding, but getting everybody where they need to be, keeping them positive. So those two have been they've been phenomenal, and I can't say enough about what they've done. Uh, John Adams, Knoxville News Sentinel. Holly, you might have come in here on this early. I uh, just got in here, but. Uh, Nara had looked absolutely lost in the first part of that game when she came in at both ends of the floor. And then all of a sudden she seemed to regain her composure and started yeah. playing really well. Were, were you surprised at the turnaround? Well, I didn't talk about her being bad in the first half, but, yes, yeah, she wasn't very good. <laughs> um, but, I, I, you know, John, I think the second half she settled down. Um, she got big rebounds for us, and then we posted her up. She hit big free throws, and she, I, I think her defense was solid. I, th you know, I think once we got past the, s the first half, we settled down, we settled in, uh, and she did some great things for us, uh, especially when we needed her to do those. Um, you know, she turned the ball over the first half, just trying to get rid of the ball, but that's just her settling down and, and getting into the flow of the game. More questions for Coach? I know you'll take some time tonight to absorb this <laughs> win, but what are you looking at as far as matchups come Monday night with Maryland for a trip to Tampa? Well, I'll be very honest with you. I have not watched either team and studied either team because I was been focusing on Gonzaga and what they needed to do. I, I didn't want to look ahead and and um, worry about what is to come. I wanted to take care of business at hand. But I, I've seen Maryland. Uh, I know they've got great guards, r really super guards that can score. They're physical. Um, you know, so I, I think we, we're going to have to to obviously take care of the ball. We're going to have to score a little bit better on the inside. And, uh, 
you know, we're still going to do what we do. Um, so I, you know, the, the, uh, Mincy is outstanding. Uh, Lexi Brown's outstanding. So we're going to have to bring our A game, and, and you don't get seated number one if, if you're not a good basketball team. And, and, and uh, I have a lot of respect for them and what they do and what they've done this season. So, you know, we're, we're kind of excited to get a chance to obviously play them. They put us out last year. And, um, hey, I, I, I'm just glad we get to play them. At about 6.30, it didn't look very good. So uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to get that chance. Holly, one last thought about your seniors. They've had a pretty big journey through this program to be here today. Yeah. Did you have a lot of faith in those seniors in these last few minutes of that game that they were going to be the ones that pulled you back? Y you know, I did. They're, they're the last really set of, of kids that, that Pat had the opportunity to recruit. Um, they've been through a lot. You know, when you, when you lose a, a, a head coach that uh, you want to play for uh, to the statue of, of Pat, um, you know, they, they've been through a lot. And then they've been very accepting of me and positive. Um, so I think that, yeah, they've, they've had a lot of burden on their shoulders. And I, I, I just think they've, they've done an incredible job. They, they can, Ariel Massengale came in as a freshman before she even put on a uniform. She was named the starting po point guard by Coach Summit. So that, that's, 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 that's tough. That's pressure. And uh, with Izzy and, and Sierra as well, they're, they're trying to carry on a tradition, and, and they've had a lot of pressure on them. But those three are competitors, and when you've got competitors and they, and they don't want to lose and they get in the gym, they're in the gym all the time, uh, and they have a love for the game. So when you have a love for the game and you're competitive and you love this program as they do, you, you have a lot of trust in them. You have a lot of trust in it. I spend a lot of time with them. We talk, we talk basketball. We watch tape together. So uh, they're, they're highly intelligent basketball players. And uh, I think they understand that, that uh, we need their leadership and, uh, you know, how they play and how they lead this team in order for this team to, to keep moving forward. Holly, you were an assistant coach on these teams. 1996 team, you came back from a 17-point deficit against Virginia in a regional final. Then in 1998, your national champion yeah. undefeated team came back from 12 against North Carolina. Does this come back rank, up, rank right up there with those in your mind? Well, I, I'll tell you, John, it's a lot easier as an assistant. Um, <laughs> I, uh, absolutely. I, I, uh, yeah, you, you, abs I mean, I've not been in this situation before um, and trying to figure out what we want to run offensively and defensively. and. You know, and when I when I watch games on TV, I can I can really come up with some great ideas when somebody's down. And but when you're standing up there and having to do it, it is tough. So so you know, you just got to have faith in your, your your kids and and how hard they play. And and hopefully you've you've instilled in them not to give up. So uh, yeah, to date this is uh, this is the biggest biggest victory for me, and I, absolutely in the in the tournament, and uh, it just is a, s a sign of, of kids that are resilient and great staff. Staff was so into it today that uh, they, we, we talked, as, as Errol said, we, we talked about our persistence drill, and it's, an, it's you, very seldom do you win a persistence drill. So it's, it's extremely, extremely difficult, and we do it, and they don't like it because it's hard. But uh, that's all we talked about in, in in timeouts and what we needed to get done. So, give, give those guys credit. They they figured out how to get it done. What does that drill look like? That persistence drill. <laughs> it is a. Um, you have three teams. One team stays on defense. We really play it with 40, we put 45 seconds on the shot clock. Um, you can't get off until the shot, the, the, the shot clock goes to zero. Uh, if you foul, it, it resets. If you give up an offensive rebound, it resets. Uh, if you get a stop, if you get a stop, the clock, the clock stays where it is. So if you get a stop at 
at 35 seconds. It stays at 35 seconds. A new team comes in. And so you're, you're having to guard two teams, really. Um, if you get a charge, it's, you get the time minus five. Uh, so it, it's, it's very difficult. It's just hard. You're getting the fresh teams in, and you, you're, you're having to come in. And, and if they barely touch it, I mean, we call foul. We, we're, uh, they don't like it. They complain about the officiating, and I'm, you know, I, I'm just calling what I see. You know, we're, we're calling what we see. So it's extremely, extremely difficult. Um, so Ariel, we didn't go. We don't go at 30. I don't remember last time we went at 30 seconds. We go at 45, and we've probably, we've probably done it um, throughout the year, probably five or six times. But it, it, it's it's very taxing, and we do it. We've done it for 40 minutes on one team's on defense the whole time. So uh, we, we love doing it, and it's, a, it's, it's something that you, you just put their backs against the wall and see if they fold or see if they're going to step up and, and get it done. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank Remind you all. Remind you to see Eric Trainer and his staff if you need more from Tennessee.